Some people dream about becoming rich, other people dream about becoming famous, and others dream of securing the low rate on a 30-year mortgage. Over the past few years, the US has faced so many, too many recession warnings. Inflation skyrocketed, tamed by higher and higher interest rates, yet the US economy persevered. Believe it or not, a lot of the credit goes to one of the best financial inventions in US history, the 30-year mortgage. When you have a 30-year mortgage, you don't have the same level of economic uncertainty, since you know that one of your biggest expenses won't change anytime soon. And that's a big deal with people spending 33.3% of their income on shelter. It's also important because people who aren't uncertain about their finances spend money, and consumer spending is the lifeblood of the US economy. There are two main options for a mortgage, fixed rate and adjustable rate. Fixed rate is when the interest rate on a mortgage doesn't change during the life of the loan. You pay the same rate for usually 30 years. With an adjustable rate mortgage, the rate will vary over the life of the loan based on how other interest rates move, like when the Fed or other central banks raise rates. It can really hurt homeowners like we're seeing in Canada and the UK right now. In fact, Canada is now allowing 30-year mortgages for first-time home buyers, so hopefully the youth can afford a home one day. In the US, fixed-rate mortgages were developed after the Great Depression to help stabilize the housing market. At this time, many people had short-term mortgages. Then the stock market crashed, institutions exploded, and unemployment hit record highs. People were defaulting on their mortgages left and right because they were dealing with job loss and reduced income, even though housing prices had fallen by 25%. To help with some of that stress, FDR's administration created the Homeowners Loan Corporation as part of the first 100 days of his New Deal package. The company was government run and bought defaulted mortgages from the crisis and reinstated them, effectively turning short-term mortgages into 20-year mortgages. Another New Deal creation, the Federal Housing Administration, then provided mortgage insurance to reduce the risk to lenders. And less risk meant more money over a longer time frame. So as the popularity of these longer-term mortgages grew, we eventually got to the 30-year mortgage. As of March, 96% of residential mortgage debt in the US is in the form of long-term fixed debt. For comparison, in many other countries, that number is 0%. This mortgage is one of the reasons the US economy is doing okay relative to other countries. Home prices have tripled since the 1990s and mortgage rates are double what they were three years ago. You can still get one, it's just a lot harder and your credit has to be better. To ensure that the younger generation can join this 30-year club, it would help if the Fed obviously started cutting rates. Maybe even cutting them so mortgage rates get down to 5.5%, which is the magic rate. We also really need to fix housing supply. The market needs to build 1.86 million new homes into 2033 to keep up with demand. And we need a much bigger inventory of homes for sale. Instead, it's collapsed from 4 million in 2007 to 1 million today. That means that we need more mixed income and mixed use housing like townhomes, duplexes, rezoning, upzoning, converting commercial into residential. Nearly 9 in 10 homeowners in the U.S. have a mortgage rate below 6%. 60% have a rate below 4%. That's 34 million homes. That is now a unique experience in a country where mortgage rates are north of 7%. About 40% of U.S. homeowners have no mortgage at all, meaning no payments, no worries, no problem. That's 33 million homes. Altogether, that's about 67 million people locked into pretty good rates. It's amazing when you think about it, and it's also a reminder that we need more opportunities to join this 30-year club.